Welcome to Are You Ready? I am Pastor Carlos Peru, Living Hope International. I pray you're having a very blessed evening in the Lord. God loves you, and I hope you have your Bible ready to get into God's Word, the greatest book you could ever read. Read the Bible. I encourage you to read it each and every day. Read a little bit of the Bible. The Bible is, is, is a, like it says in Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Tu palabra es lámpara a mis pies y luz a mi camino. Gloria a Dios. Lee la Biblia todos los días. Le los animo. Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's drink our water. Salute to all of you. Oh, Artesian water, really, really good. All right. Well, welcome everybody around the world. Welcome to Are You Ready? Bienvenidos. Estás preparado? Vamos a orar. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We thank you for your mercy, for your love, for the forgiveness of our sins, and that our names are in the Lamb's Book of Life. Holy Spirit, direct everything that we say and everything that we do. Espíritu Santo, dirige todo lo que vayamos a hablar y decir en esta noche. En nombre de Cristo Jesús, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, as you've seen, the title of this program is White House in Chaos. White House in Chaos. I don't think I've ever used the title like that, but this, <laughs> I should have used it before. But I'm going to use that tonight, White House in Chaos. You probably said, what in the world are you talking about? There's no White House in chaos. Well, look, the Holy Ghost got to get into that White House because it seems to be a mess. And it, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ, it can't be everybody else. Okay? Let's get real. Okay? Please don't tell me, well, it's Christine Nielsen. She's the problem. Then, then it was it was it, it started with Tillerson. He got rid of well, Tillerson wasn't good. He was part of the swamp. That's right. He should have gone. Then he got rid of oh Mad Dog Mattis. Well, he was a great leader. Everybody was respecting. What a great Marine, a great Marine general. This man is the best thing in sliced bread. He was great. And all of a sudden, oh no, you know he's he doesn't go. He's not in agreement with the president. He's got to go. We don't need him anymore. And then, and then we had, then we got rid of other people along the way, and then other people along the way, and we got rid. Ladies and gentlemen, it can't be. I repeat, it cannot be that it's all these, all these other people. Oh, he's just trying to clean the swamp. Please, he's not cleaning the swamp. Can we get old? Can we get real? He's not cleaning the swamp. He's bringing the swamp in. Okay, he's got John Bolton, he's got Mike Pompeo, and he's got Elliot Abrams. There's your swamp. Right? He didn't get rid of any swamp. He brought the swamp back in the White House. So he didn't get rid of the swamp. Oh, this, he's cleaning up the, he's getting rid of the swamp. No, please. The swamp is there. The swamp is there. Okay? And so now. Here we go again. Uh, he got he uh, he asked this lady. She's already been having issues. Miss Christine Nielsen. People are getting uh, on top of the Democrats. So I'm glad she's gone. She was, she was following his lead. The idea of all these things about was not something, ladies and gentlemen, that Christine Nielsen just made up. Okay, this thing about keeping separating families at the border. That's Trump. That's Trump. And now he's repeating it. So it wasn't Christine Nielsen who made that up. She didn't just out of nowhere say, oh, I'm going to start separating families, uh, children from their family. We're going to start doing it. No, that was an idea that came from President Trump. It didn't come from Ms. Nielsen. Okay, let's get over that. Let's get the truth. It didn't come. Because... Right now, what is he talking about? He's repeating the same. He's going to be tougher. And he's talking about separating parents from their children. And 
y se, está, que, que va a separar los padres de sus hijos. Y dice que no le importa que los padres entren legalmente o ilegalmente. Lo va a separar. Él quiere separar los hijos de los padres. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Eso no es bíblico? ¿Qué es eso? Where did he get that in the Bible? Okay. And he, say, he says he will do that to those who are entering even legally? Are you kidding me? He says even if they get legal asylum, he wants to separate parents from their children? I, I, I just cannot believe. But they say that this was a discussion uh, at the White House. Um, so they got rid of Mrs. Nielsen. And out she goes, and according to info, I'm going to get that in a moment, she's out, but then he today he fires the Secret Service Director, uh, Randolph Hale, he gone. There's no single reason for doing so. I just, he says, I just feel we need to be tougher. We need to be tougher. We need to be stronger. Now... Here are the following agencies. Uh, most of these are under the Homeland Security. There is a vacuum. I mean, talk about issues. This is a problem. There's a vacuum of the Homeland Security. Uh, the Secret Service Director is the DHS. Now the agency director, deputy secretary, FEMA. There's no FEMA administrator. There's no ICE and inspector general. And if they do have one, they're all acting secretary. There's no permanent secretary in any one of these. I think maybe that's what he's doing. I mean, I'm going to put everybody on a 90-day probation period. I'm not hiring anybody. That is, I'm just going to give you 90 days. If 90 days I don't like you, out of here. So maybe he's, he's, he's trying to start doing that. And according to Ms. Nielsen, about two Thursdays ago, Two Thursdays ago, there was a, like they say in England, a row. <laughs> a row. Well, they had a real big discussion at the White House, in the Oval Office, with Mike Pompeo and Miss Nielsen. They were have, arguing back and forth. Uh, they were, and the president was getting, he says that she, she says that he was unhinged. The man was just just ranting and raving and because he said he wanted the border uh, with in, uh, there in San Antonio he wanted it to be closed now at 12 noon and they were trying to tell him Mr. President we really can't just close the border it can affect our economy it can he said I don't care I want the border closed and he, they, were, they were trying to reason with him that it would not be a good idea. So this is the kind of thing, you know, she's probably, oh, I'm glad I'm out of there. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that she says, oh, praise the Lord. I'm out of that White House. I'm, I, I think that's what Miss Nielsen is saying, man, good riddance. I, I would never go back there again. Not when that gentleman is there. Other senior officials are expecting to be dismissed Pretty soon, like I said, uh, Homeland, not Homeland, uh, TSA, and also the Coast Guard. So if you're the director of the Coast Guard or TSA, get ready. I would have a meeting with your family, uh, get together, pray, get your bags ready. Because this gentleman, at any moment, he's going to ask you to go. I don't know. That's what it is. You know, he's on this thing that he's in. And... So we need to pray a lot for the president, because this isn't good. This isn't good. And the Holy Spirit is, is pressed upon me that there is chaos in the White House. There is chaos. There is confusion. And we pray that the Lord would set, in, you know, that this, we bind the spirit of confusion, and we cast it into hell in Jesus' name. Because the Bible says, La Biblia dice que Dios no es un Dios de confusión. That God is not the author of confusion. So if this confusion in the White House, it is not from God. It's from the enemy. Okay? And that's because President Trump has opened doors. He has opened doors. Okay? All right. Let's open our Bibles. We're going to do our... Tonight we are dealing with, as you can see on the board, 
the parables of Jesus, the two sons. The parables of Jesus, the two sons. And we have the characters, the two sons, the sinners, and, and the father. Okay? Vamos a ir a Mateo 21, versículo 28 32. Estamos haciendo la parábola de los dos hijos. So Matthew 21. Let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And we're going to go to verse 28 to 32. So Matthew 21, verse 28 to 32. Here we go. But what do you think? A man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not, but afterward he regretted it and went. Then he came to the second, and likewise, and he answered and said, I, I, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of these, which of the two did he, the will of the father? They said to him, the first, Jesus said to them, As surely I say to you, the tax collectors and harlots, prostitutes, will and harlots enter the kingdom of God before you. Wow. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him, and when they saw it, you did not not you did not afterward relent and believe him so let's look at these verses okay this parable the parable of the two sons this is a parable about two sons who symbolize those that obey god genuinely okay and that obey god genuinely, those who come to obey and don't and those who say they come to obey but don't commit to the lord all right, the father symbolizes God. The first son, el, primer, el, el, el padre simboliza a Dios. El primer hijo es, simboliza los pecadores, right? The first symbolizes the sinners, the first son symbolizes the sinners and, and like tax collectors and prostitutes, okay? They rebel against God. They say, we're not going to do that, but then they repent, and they do. They do what God asks them. The second son are the Pharisees and Sadducees. Who say, yes, we love God. We, we believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But inside, they're evil. They have, they have, they're very religious. They're very uh, legalistic. And solamente lo que cambia es afuera y no adentro. All the changes is on the outside, but not the inside of their hearts. Jesus forced them, those listening, to focus on themselves. Doing is more important than saying. Okay, James chapter 1 verse 22. For repentant tax collectors and prostitutes to enter into the kingdom of God, this got the Pharisees, Sadducees, very angry. How can he say they will enter? It's only for us. We're the righteous people. We're the ones having communion with God. How can these sinners be entering? Because they're repenting and they're changing. Okay? Who is the one who does the will of, of the Father? The first. The way of righteousness speaks of the repentant and faith repentant person and the faith that results from imputation of righteousness. Now, Dr. J. Vernon McGee said regarding this, is this, the religious rulers had a religion of exterior decoration with nothing real inside. When a person accepts Jesus Christ as Savior, the interior is not only redecorated, it is made new. You become a new creature in Christ. Now, going back, number eight, the outcasts of Jesus, lo que estaban lejos, lo que eran del mundo, the outcasts of Jesus found salvation, while the self-righteous, the religious people, did not. Only the, 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 the outcasts did because they surrendered. They were able to, to, to change their hearts to repent. Now the word relent is the Greek word yakoro, which means to, yakoro means to back down, to yield, to subside. Okay? So they subsided. They yielded to the Lord. Okay? 
Now, conclusion. This parable infuriated the leaders of their day, priests and elders. Many sinners were coming into the kingdom of God. The religious religious were resisting the gospel, the good news. They were resisting the gospel. They didn't want to do anything with the gospel. They didn't want to come near the, the religious leaders. They didn't know the time of their visitation. They didn't realize it. Los religiosos no podían ver que el Mesías estaba enfrente de ellos. They were the ones that knew the Bible uh, at the, that time, the Old Testament scriptures. Ellos conocían las escrituras. Debían haberse uh, entendido que Cristo era el Mesías. Pero fueron, they were blinded by the enemy and they couldn't see the truth. Are you blinded by the enemy? Do you know him? Do you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? We are living in the last days. I'm inviting you tonight to surrender. Surrender to Jesus. Let Jesus come into your heart, make you a new creature. And your name will be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Pray with me. Pray this prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I repent of all my sins. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Wash me in your precious blood. In Jesus' name, amen. Señor Jesús, me arrepiento de todos mis pecados. Te recibo como mi Rey Salvador. Lávame en tu sangre preciosa. En nombre de Cristo. Amen. Heavenly Father, pray for every single person. Say yes to you. Fill them with the Holy Spirit. Give them a hunger for your word and connect them to a church where they can be disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. If you gave your life to Christ, welcome to the family of God. Bienvenido a la familia de Dios. Los ángeles en el cielo están regocijando. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Let us know at trustjesus19 at gmail.com. Trustjesus19 at gmail.com. Well, we'll be back tomorrow continuing our study of the parables of Jesus. We were almost to the middle. There's many more. At least 20 more uh, parables we still have to do. Casi 20 más parábolas tenemos que hacer. You're welcome to continue studying with us the parables of Jesus. And remember, Shalu, Shalom, Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And please subscribe. Live for Jesus, everybody. And God loves you. God loves you. Please spread this video to as many people as possible. Live for Jesus. Vivan para Cristo. Shalom.